Somebody find the TARDIS quick. Man, it's... You said TARDIS? It's bigger, like fish? In, it's bigger in here than it looked. <laughs> I, like, I like TARDIS <laughs> with my fish. We'll be right back. Tartar, isn't it? Tatar? <laughs> and why would you want two of them? Tatar. It's not tartar. You call it tartar. It's, what did I call it? Tartar. Tartar. <laughs> yeah, I'll have the fish, sir. And can you bring the tartar? I'm going to call it tartar forever. <laughs> Baylor's going to scream. Tartar with my caviar. Let me say this. I don't like fish, but I'm going to order fish the next time Baylor's around. <laughs> So I can order a tartar. I tartar, but I said tartar. <laughs> Welcome to we Wake Up, up where we, we wake, wake up. up. I'm Pastor Jason. I'm Pastor Scott. And uh, we got a great time for playing. We got tartar for you. We're going to have fish and tartar. Fish and f uh, We do. We have fish. We have yeah. a great scripture. We're going to pray your over your day. What, what is It's Wednesday. So we're going to be John chapter 19 and verse 26. And we're so glad that you're, you're having a little coffee today with us. And uh, what a great teaching. You had a Mother's Day weekend teaching. It was just off the hook. You can watch this. Uh, after this yeah, thank you. program. Well, I, I wanted to talk about today, uh, it says in John chapter 19, verse 26, and just get a picture of this. Uh, Christ is up on the cross. Right. Like he's in that moment. And it says, in, when Jesus saw his mother there, so his mom, the, the three Marys came. <laughs> Mary, Mary, Mary. And this is my it, brother Mary. It says the disciple that God, that Jesus loved. Right. Which is, is talking about John. And so he says, when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, to his mom, yeah. he's up on the cross. Is this what's on his mind? Just think about what's on Jesus' mind. He's like, I feel like he's got a lot on his mind. He's got a lot of stuff going on I'm, right now. I'm redeeming the entire earth. earth. I'm dying for the sins of mankind. I've been I'm, beat. I'm, I'm been defeating been... death. Yeah. I've just got betrayed by Judas. Right. By on one me. of my They're top 12 friends. Uh, Pete, Pete, Pete's not on a good road here either. Yeah. We got a lot of stuff going on in his mind. Yeah, and then he's going to be descending to the pit, preaching to those in prisons. He's going to be raising from the dead in three days. I, I've got things to do! This is the pinnacle or pivotal moment in his life. This is why he was born, was to die right. and raise from the dead for us. So this is a big... I, I, you get it. Obviously, you get it. And and this is what he, what's on his mind right now. He says, when he saw his mom and the disciple whom he loves sitting, standing nearby... He said to her, woman, <laughs> woman, here is your son. I, I like that when he says woman, you know, that's what he said to her when she's like, uh, they ran out of wine at the wedding. Yeah. So kind of like just rewind to his very first miracle for a second. I think it's part of today's story <laughs> is, is that they ran out of wine. And they came to Mary and Jesus and like, hey, we're out of wine at this wedding. And, and she looks at Jesus and she says, <laughs> and Jesus goes, woman, <laughs> woman. And he goes, it's not my time. Yeah. Right now is not the time for the miracles. It didn't matter. And she goes, she looks at him and then she looks at the servants and she goes, just do whatever he says. <laughs> and you get the idea yeah, that, that they had a really fun relationship. Yeah, where she's like, all right. Because he's like, well, I'm not doing a miracle now. And But you know how moms are. Mom's like, stop, just do it. You're just, like, oh my gosh. He's like, for my mom. He's like, this is from, not how it was supposed to go. But uh, It's my mom. He's, he looks up to the, to the goes, Lord. He's like, what are you going to do? 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 It's I mom. Do it. Honor <laughs> your mom. So... So now we're at the end. So that was right. the beginning of his ministry. Yeah. Now we're at the end. And this is, this is what he says. He says, woman, here is your son. And then to the disciple, he says, to John, he says, here is your mother. And then it says, from that time on, the disciple took her into his home. So we know what this meant. Right. Like, take care of my mom. Just take care of mom. And then check this out. Uh, verse 28, very next verse. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished. So that the scripture would be full, Jesus said. And so get, get this. That was the last thing on his check sheet. He had he had they, fight death, fight sickness, crucifixion, take care of mom. Yeah, the finished works of the cross and oh, don't forget your mom. Part. See, he shows us our Savior is like, hey, I walked this earth in your shoes and I'm going to show you how I roll. I'm going to show you how it's done. And how does he roll? Honor mom. I'm going to take care of my mom. I'm going to make sure that after I'm gone, mom is handled. And, I, and we got to look at our own lives and how can we... Love on mom. You know, the Bible is very specific in that it's the only one that has a promise with it. Honor your mom and you'll have a long life. Yeah, that it only might one go you well find, with you. It'll go well with you. So you go, okay, wait a second. But the word honor, oftentimes people go, well, yeah, but my mom wasn't this and my mom wasn't that. But the Bible doesn't ever give you a specification to say, honor mom if she did these things. Well, yeah, it honor just, mom unless. It just says honor her because she exists. She gave you life. If Without her... You're not, You're not here. here. 
Without her, you're not fulfilling your purpose. Without her. So if the only thing she gave you was life, she gave you a better gift than anyone else on this earth has ever given you. And think about how God deals with us. What is it that turns us around or changes our life from darkness to light? What is it? It's his goodness. His goodness. It's his goodness. So maybe your goodness, even in those cases where you were rejected, you were betrayed, abandoned, maybe mom was not the best mom in the world. Right. Even in those cases, what an opportunity to show Christ in you, right. to let Christ in you out and go, you know, I love her anyways because she's my mom. And she's awesome. And I just, I'm not going to, I'm not going to remember that stuff. I'm just going to love I my forget mom. forget it. I'm just going to love her. And my mom's mom wasn't the best, but you know what mom did? She just loved she her. She just loved her. And she just loved her. And, and her, then, and, and even then that the relationship got healed. Yeah. And then she enjoyed her mom. It was funny that when mom decided just to love her, mm -hmm. that grandma began to, the things that annoyed mom, the things that were hurtful to mom, because grandma grew up a hard life. And so grandma used her words in a very painstakingly way. We even knew because that growing up. Because she was up. in pain. Because she was in pain. So we even knew that. But, you know, we were so confident in who we are, didn't we? Grandma would come out all the time and she's like, you guys are like the worst grandchildren ever. And yeah. we're like, okay. I don't think we are. Yeah. She's like, you know, we have some kids back home. They're great grandchildren. I wish they were my And we're like, okay. But you get, she was speaking from that place of a pain, hurt, that, that pain. place of feeling rejected her whole life. And so, well, how do you overcome that? Reject back? Is that going to work? No, because then she just rejects harder. But when my mom decided, she says it, she goes, I just decided to love her. Just love her. I just loved her just love and mama. called her all the time. I had paid for her to come out, took her on special trips. And all of a sudden, grandma became the mom that my mom always needed. Yeah. She became a loving, kind, amazing person because love always wins. It does. And I'm telling you, I want to talk to some teenagers out there right now. You got a mom. Yeah. Honor her. Do something special tomorrow for her today. Take out the trash without being asked. Clean something up. Get her a coffee. Wait, take out Get the her... trash without being asked? I'm just saying. You know what's funny is when, when if you do, moms don't need them much. They, they lay down their whole life for you. You don't yeah. even know everything you have. Yeah. Your mom laid down. You got shoes. You got stuff. And we as teenagers, we get into ourselves. Well, I don't. I don't. But if you come out of yourself and you just do something small and wow. special for mom, know this. You can never outgive mom. Yeah. You bring and mom I... a special coffee? It's going to get crazy. And, and really, when you begin to take, what that is, is that's taking control of your own life. Right. No longer being a responder, but being an instigator. So responder says, you have, I'm going to wait until you tell me what to do, and then I'll do it and complain. Because why? I hate being controlled. Right. But an instigator says, I'm going to do, I'm going to take out the trash. I'm going to do the dishes. I'm going to help mom. I'm going to say something nice to her. I'm going to write her a card without being asked. I'm going to buy her a gift without being asked. Because now I'm taking control of my life, and I'm learning how to honor my mom. I'm learning how to be in charge of my own life and not be a responder. And the blessing, God says, you have a blessed life. I believe well with you. that my life has gone well. I have a, a blessed life and I believe one of the key parts of it is you and I. Yeah. We love our mama. Well, we have the best mom, mom in the world. We do. And sometimes it's not fair, I feel like, because of what great parents we had. Right. Um, but I also get that I've been around people and I know what it's like to, where people feel like their parents weren't there for them. Their mom wasn't there. They were being, they didn't even know their mom. Some people were given up for adoption, foster care. They never even met their parents. But here's what I know is that if you've got mom, if you know her, give her your goodness and be like Jesus. Follow Christ in this manner and make sure that as your parents grow older, right. that it's in your heart to take care of them. It says that Mary moved in with John. That's crazy to me. Now she would have been a little older, right? And so she, he... And in those days, she would be... Because they, they didn't have the lifespan that we have today. Yeah. Um, I, I think the lifespan was somewhere around 30, 40 years old back in those days yeah. because of disease and yeah, stuff. Yeah, it was considered so very she, old if you hit So she had to be almost 50 years old at the time, I would think. Some would, some would guess. Well, he's 34. And she was... Some, would, some say she had around 16, 17. I don't know. Yeah, we don't get those details. But what we do know this is that Jesus made sure his mom was taken care of even after he left. Right. And, and, and put boots on the ground. When I say boots on the ground, it's because you, you think about it, he's Jesus, the son of God. He's going to go up to... Well, isn't God going to just take care of Mary anyways? Well, you, no. You but gotta, he, he's, he's like, no, I need boots on the ground. I, I need a person right. to watch over my mom. God's watching over my mom. Sure. I'm watching over mom, obviously. Uh, right. But I need a person to take right. care of my mom. I need a physical body. And it's the same way. I think today's culture, a lot of times people just... They kind of forget about their parents in their older years, right. and they don't. They're so worried about their own finances and right. their own busyness in life that maybe they're not. That's their culture. I'm not blaming anybody. I'm not trying to make you feel, no. feel bad, but I'm showing you there is a responsibility for us 
to take care of our parents into their older years. Call mom years. today. Write some checks. I want to. I, I want to call mom. I mean, actually, I have lunch with mom today. But call mom. Set a schedule. You know, sometimes if they live in a different area, we get so busy we forget. And so you maybe set a reminder so you don't forget. Yeah. Text her once a day. We have texts now. Yeah. We have ways to communicate with her. I try my best to call my mom every single day. Wow. That. You're a better son than me. No, I, don't I think, think we can all be inspired. He has a better conversation. I'm a once a weeker. Are you, you, you see her every day. I called mom yesterday on the Sunday. Did you? Yeah, of course I did. And, uh, and we had a great conversation. Oh, because it was Mother's Day. Yeah. I got to call her every day but Mother's Day. It would be <laughs> funny if I didn't call her on Mother's Day. <laughs> hey, let's pray over your day. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and praise you for your word, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for our mothers that we have, Lord. And so right now we go forth into our week. And no matter what kind of mom they are, they gave us life. And we want to honor them. We want to give value. That's what honor is, means that I give value to. And so I want to value them. I want to, I want to go ahead and do nice things, say nice things, speak nice things, and make sure that mom is taken care of, Lord. And for those whose moms have gone on to see the Lord, Lord, right now, we just pray for a special peace in their life, Lord, that they know that mom is in a better place, Lord. And Lord, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for that, that your peace just surpasses any understanding they have. And then go forth in excitement and good memories of mom in jesus mighty name amen thanks for watching yeah thumbs up it share it if you liked it two or one whatever you can do put it I on think. instagram kickstarter i keep saying kickstarter i don't know if you i don't know it. why you're putting it on kickstarter but i like that just kickstart that thing <laughs> we're it. like a motorcycle Boom. Um, but you can subscribe to you can watch this anytime you want on youtube if you're not watching on youtube i just want you to make sure you know you can watch it anytime you want on youtube we release a brand new one monday through friday every single day and you can do that by visiting YouTube, type in the word Daily Bible Study, and you'll find us right away. Or you can text 84483. You want to text wake up, no space in there. Wake up to 84483, and you can watch us on wakeuptv.tv. Make sure you're in church this weekend. Get in God's in house. Yep. What a great way to start off an amazing week with your family. God's house. You have been raised up among your own people with an assignment. It's what Jesus loves to do. He came and dropped on the inside of you because what he, what he wants to do is he wants to raise you up, set you free, set you on the rock, and you begin to break the cycle off of your family that has been imprisoning them for years, imprisoning them for generations, anger, alcoholism, addiction, and divorce, poverty that labeled your family and held it down for years when Jesus dropped on the inside of you he delivered you and he raised you up among your people your family that last name that somebody gave you that last name that somebody gave your spouse whatever the that world he puts you in that family